Hey everyone, Joshua Fekas Quest here. It's Friday, that means it's a podcast. Podcast's going to be dropping. This time I'm going to be talking about my experience at HueFest. That's Harrisburg University's inaugural HueFest. They're, uh, uh, they're the esports festival where they had music, they had uh, tournaments of a variety of kind, they had talent there, and I'll get into all of that. I think from now on also... I'm going to put the news onto the podcast because I'm not keeping up with the I'm keeping up with the news personally, but I'm not producing anything on the YouTube for news like I had originally wanted to. But I do produce the podcast pretty consistently. I'm pretty happy with how I'm ha- handling it. So I think I'm going to include. Excuse my stutter there for a second. I think I'm going to include the news into the podcast every Friday. So I think I'm going to start that this week. There's actually been some uh, pretty big news. Maryville University released their 2019 League of Legends roster and their Overwatch uh, roster. And Jose Espin, he's uh, going to be stepping down from Robert Morris University, as well as Mono, no longer going to be the coach for Robert Morris University. So I'm going to go and get into that one right now. Uh, first, Maryville University. Big news because they're the defending champions in League of Legends. I'm not sure what they're doing in Collegiate Overwatch. I, 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 uh, I don't keep up with, T- with Tespa as much as I want to. I'm going to be changing that, though. Because uh, I did actually, I'm going to be talking about Collegiate Overwatch during the Hue Fest and the uh, the Collegiate Overwatch casters, Hex and Uber. Great guys. We'll get into that later. <clears throat> but I'm going to uh, I'm going to start watching a little bit more Overwatch uh, as far as Collegiate Overwatch goes. I tried watching Overwatch in general. Uh, it, it, it's it's I, like I I've played Overwatch. I've, I've I know what's going on in Overwatch. I know all the characters. Uh, well, I don't know the new ones. I haven't played it in a I haven't played it in a few months actually now. But I know what's going on. But when I watch Overwatch as a spectator, it's I mean, maybe they changed it since uh, since last time. But it, it's hard to keep up. There's a lot of colors going through. There's a lot of um, a lot of sounds. There's a lot of things going on. And I thought I would be able to keep up with it, but uh, you know, because I I watched you know, League of Legends constantly for about three years, four years. But um, yeah, not not the same with. Uh, with Overwatch, but I do want to keep up with it. Even if I don't watch it, I at least want to keep up with it a little bit more. And I'm going to go and start that with the uh, Maryville roster. But first, I want to talk about the League of Legends roster. That's the one I'm most familiar with, and I, I'm i going to throw it up on here uh, right now. You'll see some of the names there already. Niles, Iconic, Wolf, Value, Abu. Uh, Niles, Wolf, I know are returning. I don't quite remember if um, uh, Iconic, Value... I don't think Value was there because Saskio was the ADC last year. He's graduated, and congrats to Saskio, by the way. Uh, I don't remember if Abu was there. I do remember Ni- Niles and Wolf uh, totally, though. Uh, but I do want to pick up, uh, at least uh, point out, three of the um, uh, pickups, four of the pickups, actually. We're going to start with Julian and Evan RL, two of the most recognizable names in uh, Collegiate League of Legends. Evan RL, uh, especially. So, uh, both of them coming from uh, Columbia College. Julian, he was on Columbia College, I believe, two seasons ago. Evan RL has played there for the last two to three seasons, uh, going from uh, Robert Morris University over to Columbia College. Uh, didn't go as, you know, Columbia College. I, I report, I, what, whenever I did actually do the news segments you know, throughout the week, I did mention that the very first one I actually had was about Columbia College kicking Evan RL. So, Evan RL, he needed a, needed a place to go. He's a, f- a phenomenal player. He's still in college. There's no reason why he shouldn't be able to go play for a prominent team. And he is now on Maryville University. So, Maryville University, they're running a 10 man, uh, 10 person, I should say, 10 person uh, roster. So Julian Evan RL Shady also I believe that's amazingly Shady uh, from formerly of a uh, uh, TSM Academy, so some power there too. Kind Jungle I don't really I'm not familiar with hybrids or Kind Jungle, but on the comments in the uh, the the raw the, the tweet from Maryville Esports Maryville GG when they posted the uh, the graphic, there was a lot of love for Kind Jungle, so I'm assuming he's like he's well known. I'm. I'm I mean, obviously, I'm going to be seeing more of him throughout the uh, season as I, as I, uh, you know, try to keep up with everything. But heard a lot about Kind Jungle as far as comments go, so I'm looking forward to that one as well. Uh, moving on, though, over to their uh, Overwatch team. So I, I'm, I, I don't know anything about their Overwatch team. I'm assuming this is a good team. So I'm going to talk about Overwatch, with specifically uh, Her- uh, Harrisburg University and Maryville University's Overwatch team, pretty soon, because they had a phenomenal bout in uh at in the finals of the hue fest's overwatch tournament and uh, i don't know if these were the same players or not and i I don't even know how it's broken down there's three support players again i'm not just not familiar with the meta of 
uh, mayor of the university. But either way, you see the graphic on the screen. Those are the players. And um, if there is anything I do know, it is that the, you know the uh, management style of uh, Clerky. He uh, he 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 makes a roster to win. And they won Hugh Fest. Spoiler alert: They won Hugh Fest's uh, uh, Overwatch tournament. And it was a very close game. Came down to I think the very last map, if I recall. Uh, against Harrisburg University. And Harrisburg University, uh, they were against what everyone, everyone called Maryville the juggernauts that they were just going to crush everything. And Harrisburg they, they took them all the way to the very end. And it was very impressive, very exciting. And that's kind of what I wanted, to, why I wanted to start watching Collegiate Overwatch a little bit more because it was really fun to watch. Like once I got into it, just knowing the atmosphere, knowing the energy put into it, again, kind of hard for me to really keep up with everything that was going on like i understood where the objective was everything what what needed to be done i just as i don't know maybe i was getting old some of the things were just going a little too fast but i knew what was going on overall and that made it very exciting for me um okay so other news robert morris university jose espin uh, he's going to be stepping down from robert morris he has uh, been the director of esports there uh for a few quite a while i mean he's helped lay the groundwork at robert morris so um you know, live long and prosper for him, for sure, because he's uh, he's leaving behind quite the legacy over there from uh, at Robert Morris, and wherever he goes on to, he's gonna be phenomenal there too, because he's just a dedicated person. He's been he's been at almost every event I've ever been to because his team is always there. So uh, yeah, I wish him the best for sure. Same with Mono. Mono has been the uh, the coach for the League of Legends team over at Robert Morris University. He announced that he is also stepping down as well. So. Once again, good luck in future endeavors for Mono as well. So, I want to get to the uh, the podcast part of this. Did the news. I know there's more news, but that's the news that was important to me. That's the news that I felt was the most relevant. There's so much news in Collegiate. Honestly, there's like tournaments going on. There's always everything being announced all the time. I can't. Man, I would, I would, that would take a long show of just news. I don't know. I feel like that's the most prominent news, the ones I just covered. But... I want to talk about my experience at Hugh Fest. Overall, great experience. Uh, spoiler alert. I've had two spoiler alerts so far. It was a great experience overall. Uh, Chad Smelt's great to work with. Everyone there was, uh, almost everyone there was great to work with. Uh, yeah, I did have a, I kept my issues to myself. I don't, uh, during an event, I try to be as professional as possible. I won't talk crap to anybody, uh, even though some people probably deserve it and need to be you know, brought down a couple notches. I, I just don't do that in live events. I try to be very professional. And so far, you know, I've, I've kept to that. I'm, I'm a, on Twitter. I'm a little bit different in person. Uh, you know, outside of an event, I'm very different. I, I, I'm, I still, you know, have respect there. But if someone I feel like is being disrespectful, I will call them out on it in person. But at a live event, I'm a little bit different. So you know, no issues here. But uh, I do want to talk about a couple, uh, you know, uh, one or two things about a certain individual. But overall. I don't want that to dampen anything. Everything else is great. I'm going to talk about some great things here. And, uh, yeah, so what is Hugh Fest? Uh, it happened, uh, the first one was uh, last fall, uh, September, October, I believe. Uh, Harrisburg University. So Harrisburg University is, I believe, the capital of Pennsylvania. A relatively small city, if you want to call it that. It's a town, really. It's not that big. Harrisburg University, uh, if you're not, like looking at it looking for it you'll kind of miss it because you're just walking by and it's like just in a sh on a strip of uh, with other buildings i mean it's definitely not a mall school don't even get me wrong it's it's a large building but it just kind of blends in with everything and it is tall <laughs> there's <laughs> it's a uh, i don't know i don't know how many stories it was i think it's 13 or 14 it's, it's a it's a tall building and the tournament happened throughout that entire building and culminated in the I don't know if you can hear that motorcycle outside, uh, but anyway, it culminated in the, uh, the I guess their auditorium, their uh, I don't know, their like the some sort of theater. It was really cool. Uh, obviously, it was not built for esports, and you could tell that immediately. But you know, they worked with it. They made it. They made the best of what they could. And for a first year, not so bad whatsoever. Very enjoyable experience overall. Uh, yeah, Harrisburg University, small town. Uh, oh, and by the way, everything was accommodated. Everything was great. Um, yeah. Couldn't, couldn't ask for a more friendly staff. They're uh, they're really they're really nice. They're really good people to work with. It was a great first year's experience, and they had security there. Oh my god! I want to shout out to the security. They have security there. Metal detectors. People checking bags. I can't stress how much uh, importance 
I, I can't stress how important I, I felt that was. Let me get the sentence out properly. That's uh, something that I feel like needs to happen at almost every eSport event. I, I hate that it has to happen, but it's one of those things, better safe than sorry. Um, just, you know, put security into your budget. Uh, Harrisburg University did, and I very much appreciated it because I don't, you know, like, we all have our bad days, and some people have a lot of bad days. I don't know. No, I'm not going to really get into all that. Um, either way, it was appreciated. Made me feel good. Uh, you couldn't get into the uh, eSport area. So, uh, like I said, very tall building. Most of the uh, uh, eSport, you know, the, the, the tournament, the gameplay happened um, somewhere on the upper floors. Um, like, it was the like, upper two or three floors. And you, it was just a big, big area, a uh, few areas, depending on which game you were playing. I believe there's Overwatch. There was League of Legends. There might have been Hearthstone as well. I think those were the big three. There might have been other ones, but I don't, I'm not, not too familiar uh, familiar. I didn't actually get to see too much of it, honestly, because I was working for, uh, you know, Harrisburg doing various things, uh, mostly trying to get interviews for them and also, um, uh, re uh, like, uh, like, recording their matches, I guess, so they can use it in montages later on. So the hotel we were at, uh, Harrisburg was, the university was just right down the street. Everything was a walking distance, too. That was great. And it is a, it is a, you know, it's a university, so it is a small college town. So there were bars around, which was, I loved. I'm not like a super huge drinker, but, you know, if I'm like traveling and I'm just chilling, and I, especially if I have a bar right next to my hotel, yeah, I'm going to go. It's, of course. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a really, really chill uh, atmosphere. Um, yeah, not much, not, not really much to, to say about Harrisburg. It's cloudy. It's, I mean, it's the Midwest. It's pretty. So, I mean, there you go on that one. Uh, it is the, the it, it is a huge event, though. So the day of the event, or uh, I think it was the second day of the event. There was, I, I, man, I actually don't remember if it was one or two days now. But there were concerts out in the street. So the whole street was, like, dedicated to this uh, festival. So this was Harrisburg University's, like, coming out party for the eSport or their eSports program. And it, they, I, from what I understand, they invested a ton of money into this. I don't... I don't want to speculate the exact number because that's hearsay, and I, you know I'm not Chad Smeltz. I don't know the exact number, but I, I do understand it was a, a very fair amount that I, I will probably never ever see in my entire life. And if I do, I, 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 I I'm just gonna, I don't know what I, I don't know what I would do with that much money. Maybe I guess hold an esports festival, but it, it blocked off the entire street. Uh, there were bands outside playing Alien Ant Farm. Uh, so that was the big one for me because when I was young. Uh, Alien Ant Farm did their cover of Smooth Criminal, and that was like one of the coolest things in the world when I was like, I don't know, 15, 6, 14, something like that. And I really wanted to listen to them. <laughs> I didn't even get the chance to. I didn't even know when they were playing. Uh, they just played throughout the day. There were other ones. Gosh, I don't remember the other bands. Uh, they were relevant during that time, too. Alien Ant Farm was the only one that kind of had my heart, though, so I just listened to that one. Or I wanted to listen to that one, or other. I didn't get to. Uh, because I was, again, just doing things for Harrisburg, trying to, you know, just be a team player. So uh, the facility, they so they built a new esports facility into the bottom floor. And by the way, I have notes here, so I'm trying not to skip anything, but I'm probably going to skip things because it, it, was, it was a long-ass festival. But they had a new uh, esports facility, and, man, they catered to everybody. Like, literally, they catered food. Uh, they had uh, – they all – Took us all down to the esports uh, arena, esports training area, which was rather large. It was in the basement, but it looked very, very fresh, very pretty. Uh, large had um, a station for uh, maybe four teams. I would assume for you know different different games at different times, all that stuff. They had a giant projector uh, so they can look over games and study as a group, as a team. And yeah, they uh, showed us all that. They catered us food. They had some great catered food. And we all just kind of uh, chilled down there. Uh, the, the the staff, the players, the teams, all everybody uh, just kind of chilled down there and um, just had you know it was kind of the uh, it's kind of like the little little like a little mini shindig before the you know, before everyone had to get to work uh, the next day. So that was really nice. Got to talk to some of the players, uh, some of the coaches. Uh, Michael Jones. I talked to Michael Jones. Shout out to him. He's a so fun fact. He used to. Um, uh, I think it was the director at, uh, or the coordinator, director, manager of, uh, ah, Culver Stockton. Yeah, that's that's what he was there for. And he recently moved to Springfield, Missouri, which, fun fact, that's where I'm born. So he's he's uh, doing esports in the, the, the place where I was born, the Ozark Mountains. Uh, I don't know. 
So he's going to stick stick out in my head because, you know, he now lives in the place I was born, which is weird to me. I didn't think that would ever happen. But I, I didn't know that was a possibility of, you know, things to happen. And I met a lot of other players, too, a lot of other coaches. And I like to talk to people. I like to intermingle uh, because, I don't know, it's like it's, 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 it's the world that I'm in. Like, I just want to know people that are there. I'm in the mood. I'm like, I'm in the environment. I'm in the mode. Uh, I guess mood, if you want to call it that. So just, uh, just kind of go, go, go intermingle, go talk to people, go. Those people are always on Twitter, but you know, you don't get to see them face to face sometimes. And it's a little bit different whenever people are face to face because, uh, emotion, you know, little facial features, twitches, all these things come out and it's, uh, you get, (laughs) you get a lot more of a conversation when you're talking to someone in person than on Twitter. And I think everyone, I'm sure everyone listening knows that. Um, but yeah. Uh, the next day, got to work. Um, so this whole time I was looking for Chad Smelt. I'd only because I just wanted to say hi. That dude, he did not stop the entire <laughs> entire weekend. He looked so stressed. Uh, not in a bad stress, like, oh my God, things are you know coming down. It's like, oh my God, I'm doing this. <laughs> it's working. And <laughs> I just got to keep doing it for another 24 hours, 48 hours, however long it was. I don't envy him. He looks so tired, but he kept going. Uh, I finally, like, I think I saw him on the street uh, just walking along. He was uh, doing some sort of task. And I even I was even hesitant to, you know, stop him and say hi. But, you know, I did because he's paying me. So I figured it's like, hey, hey, boss. <laughs> uh, yeah, nice dude. He, uh, he was super cool. Again, didn't get to talk to him much because he was just you know, busting his ass doing other things, doing his job. So I uh, figured the best, you know, kind of courtesy I could do is, bust my ass and do my own job uh so yeah staff of uh harrisburg university you know all the all the all the people he has to coordinate they're all really cool from uh you know from the uh the video people i worked with my old friend Teresa. that was really cool uh, you know i used to work with her in csl we've been to many events together and it was really cool being at this event over there as well met dan Berger, really cool dude as well still uh twitter followers blah blah, blah all that stuff um yeah uh i don't I wish I knew everyone else's name as far as like Harrisburg staff, but everyone at the uh, at the actual event, you know, when it was time to be in front of the camera, uh, they all they all worked professionally. It was all really it was all pretty easy, even like even though like I said, uh, nothing here at Harrisburg was built for esports. But you can't really uh, you don't really think of anything nowadays built for esports like the arenas, the uh, theaters, anything like that. Everything's just kind of improvised uh, and just thrown together. So. It was nice seeing how well they adapted and being able to work with them. Because, I mean, I, I do pride myself on working with anybody I can, uh, no problem. And I know going into these sort of events, there's going to be inexperienced people with esports. Like, they might not know the order of things, uh, the, the like little nuances. But um, as long as they are able to produce a, you know, a high-quality show, it's pretty, you know, get the shots they need. Uh, with the well, obviously with the quality they need as well, the lighting, all that, it's pretty good. And they did fine. They did great. The the, the mic system was a little bit awkward. You know, I actually held mics. You don't usually do that, but again, they improvised and it made it work. Really cool stuff. I love all these little experiences. I love all these little new uh, niche experiences because for every every professional thing you see, there's going to be a grassroots thing that you have to adapt to. And one day that's going to come along again. You'll be ready for it. I'll be ready for it. I love that. I love, I love it when people can adapt to whatever situation they have in order to make the product uh, work. That's, I don't know. I, I, I like, I like that sort of thing. Not just in esports. I, I transition that into my personal life, my professional life. I think it's really cool. And Harrisburg staff, they did a great job. They were optimistic. They seem stressed. Obviously it's a big event for them and they 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 made it work so yeah props to the uh props to the hu guys and and women all of them staff i really should be gender neutral i mean, I, I do try to be gender neutral but i'm not going to get into those you know social aspect of it on my on my podcast but yeah yeah props to the uh, harrisburg university folks i gotta see some of the lcs player actually i think two lcs players moon and wild turtle they were pretty chill. Moon apparently lost his voice. I had to, so I was supposed to shoutcast, commentate with Captain Flowers and my other co-caster. I'm not gonna, not gonna. I told him I won't mention his name because like I don't, um, I don't, I don't want him to uh, feel bad for things I'm gonna say or ever do. So I don't want him to 
be suffer from association with me. I know how I am. So, uh, yeah, Wild Turtle was pretty cool. He was like, I don't know. I don't really get starstruck. I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. It's hard to explain. I respect Wild Turtle for what he does, obviously. But it's like, I, don't know, I mean, you're just like another person to me. You're cool, so that's cool. And props to props to you, and nice to meet you. Moon, he was... <laughs> Well, poor dude. Oh, yeah, so I got I got on a tangent there. Um, yeah, I was supposed to shoutcast and commentate, but Moon uh, threw, <laughs> like lost his voice. Uh, he said because he got sick. I'm pretty sure it's because all those guys stayed up and drank the previous night. And Moon, uh, at, you know, drank and partied, whatever. You know, there's club. I don't know. Is there a club in... Yeah, there's clubs in Harrisburg. There's clubs everywhere. Um, yeah, Moon couldn't talk. Moon could not speak. Bless his heart. He just kind of sat there. <laughs> And I guess just was a personality. You know, some people can get away with just being a personality and collecting a paycheck that way. I guess that's what Moon did. And <laughs> he, seemed, he seemed miserable, so whatever. Uh, so uh, Moon, Sojin, uh, who's the uh, coach for CLG, and uh, Wild Turtle, they were all supposed to be analysts on, like, an analyst area. I'm not going to call it desk because there was no desk. But an analyst area. And uh, they... I mean, they, they don't really do that that often unless they're guided, you know, uh, uh, LCS. They like to micromanage everybody and keep them guided, which is good in, in a lot of aspects. Like, this sort of thing is good because you have someone like Dash keeping the, keeping the path going, keeping them walking on that path, and, you know, picking up where they, he needs to. So that's kind of what I was I, I ended up doing. Uh, I will admit somewhat poorly. I was not prepared whatsoever for it. I was prepared to commentate in a TriCast uh at, at the at the uh finals or you know the league of legend thing with uh my co-caster and captain flowers but uh scramble last moment and i try to be flexible with everybody scramble last moment got i replaced moon and tried to guide uh sojin and wild turtle on the analyst area so whenever we, after the matches whenever we talked about things i was trying to guide them and make sure that they, that it was at least entertaining i like i said i think i'd I don't think I did as good a job as I could have. I'll completely admit that. I should have done way better. I also, like I said, wasn't prepared. I don't want to use excuses, though. But, yeah, it, it, I, it was a little, like, we tried to script things. I hate scripting. I'm terrible with scripts, uh, especially when it involves other people. And it's best if there was a structure there, and I did not give that structure. But, you know, I did pick up slack whenever, it needed, whenever I could. Did my best. And, you know what? Uh, stuff happens whatever it, it was it I, I it's a learning experience for me and hopefully next time if i'm in that situation i'll do better but you know props to wild turtle and matthew sojin they uh they 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 did their part they talked they i mean they obviously they have the brain for the game they they talked about it when they could when they when i when i <laughs> guided them to the right area and uh we got through it so uh yeah so i tweeted earlier that i was gonna t probably talk a little bit of crap about somebody so yeah, let's talk about Captain Flowers. Okay, so man, uh, Riot. So ever, I don't know. I don't know how many people know anything about Riot uh, as far as a reputation before before all the headlines, before all that. Um, Riot has, and it, it, this is known in the industry. Like I've worked with CSL for five years, and we, we sometimes we will get into talks about uh, Riot and things about how culty, how cult like it is. You have to assimilate. You pretty much have to. It's like a. It's like a, a. A fraternity of bros, and if you're not a part of that fraternity, then you're just nobody. You're just a little pissant, and that's kind of the vibe Captain Flowers gave off. And I, I you know what? I wasn't surprised whatsoever because that's that's just Riot. That's I don't know who Captain Flowers was before Riot, but whatever Captain Flowers is when he enters Riot, he is now Riot Captain Flowers, no matter what. And even afterward, I have seen people leave Riot and still be that way, and it sucks. That's not how humans are supposed to be. They're awkward, they're elitist, and it's annoying. So let me uh, let me get to the point here. So I was actually on the plane with Captain Flowers going over to Harrisburg, and I don't know. I, I'm assuming he didn't know. He probably didn't notice me. I'm assuming he didn't notice me. I'm like a no face. I don't. I'm assuming nobody knows what I look. No, like I have my profile picture on my Twitter. You know, you can look me up. No problem. It's easy. Just Google my name. It's fine. Uh, I don't think he knew who I was though, which is fine. But I introduced myself, said hi, and he just kind of like, he 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 said hi. He's you know he did that thing, but then he was like, 
he was looking for his LCS boys. He was looking for uh, Wild Turtle, Moon, and, and Sojin. And by the way, Sojin comes from Collegiate. I mean, I'm not talking crap about uh, Moon, Sojin, or Wild Turtle. They're actually, they're really chill. They're nice. Uh, not talking shit about them. I don't think I was supposed to say shit. No, well, I did anyways. Not talking crap about them, but uh, yeah, you know, like Captain Flowers, he's familiar with the LCS boys, so he wanted to hang with the LCS boys because heaven forbid you get outside your comfort zone for a second and say hi to another human being especially me and that's the thing too is i feel like i don't i like i've been told that uh riot kind of has a thing against me which i'm not surprised i i talk crap about them all the time on twitter mark merrill has me blocked on twitter uh, as well so i'm not surprised if that is true i i, I I've, it's just something i've heard and maybe he was told not to talk to me i don't know I, you know what? You know, I don't know because he didn't give a piss to stay around to talk to me, to tell me <laughs> or for me to ask. So my co-caster and I, we did, um, we did invite him out for drinks. We were like trying to be kosher and me and my, my colleague, he's like way nicer than I am. He, uh, you know, wants to work for Riot one day. So bless his heart. I want him to succeed because he's my, he's my, he's my colleague. He's my friend. He's like, we've been, to, we've been to events over the last couple of years together. So I don't, I don't ever want to drag him in. I don't ever want to wish anything ill upon him, but I don't think Riot's a good idea in general because I've seen what it does to people. It's, it's weird. Um, I've, seen friends of, I've seen friends who have friends in Riot, and they're kind of weird too. Uh, I guess I've been told sometimes it's a misunderstanding, but maybe I'm just hostile. I don't know. I try to be nice to everybody. I at least give people a chance. I gave Captain Flowers a chance. We messaged him saying, hey, let's go out for drinks. Uh, he... I think he said he was gonna do something else. I don't remember what he said. I probably still have it in my DMs. It's really not important to me anymore. Uh, yeah, he was a ghost throughout the entire event too. It's like, man, like people are here to at least see you. Like, you know, you know, you're a name. Like, go go say hi to people. No, he said hi to people on like the last day, like for like two hours. Uh, so like we had like a little shindig down in the basement. I think he was there. That might have been during catering. Him and the LCS guys came along, and uh, so he said hi to people then, and then he kind of disappeared for the rest of the event until it was his, t his time to cast, and then he showed up. Now, props to him on this part. He is super professional whenever you're casting, whenever you're working with him, super professional. Like, there was a switch that I saw, actually. It's uh, He was just like, ghost, 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 leaves, leaves, whatever, whatever, stay away from me. And then when it was time to work, like, like just like you could see it he like turned on talked to me talked to a co-caster it's like here hey guys this is gonna be easy let's do this we i was really motivated motivated uh, motivating whenever like we were supposed to be actually working but outside of working he's like just another riot guy and yeah that sucks um i i don't really want to, like <laughs> I would lie saying that I don't have pre, you know, uh, um, like thoughts already about people in Riot. So like when I go to meet a Riot, as somebody from Riot, I automatically know that they're going to be kind of douchey, and I uh, I try to erase that from my brain when I go meet somebody saying, all right, I'll give them a chance. I know, I know, I think that though, but regardless, I still do try to give a chance, and I try with Captain Flowers and. You know, whatever. He's a riot guy. He's going to be a riot guy. That's what he wants to do. And that's not what I want to do. So, you know what? Maybe it's best we didn't talk. Um, but again, I do want to emphasize he was very professional while we worked together. So, there's at least that. Now, contrast to that. Oh, my God. So, I walked out to the... Uh, <laughs> I walked... It was after the event. I was like, okay, I'm going to get a drink. I walked out of my hotel room uh, down on the street. And I hear this Australian dude... Oi, mate! <laughs> I was like, who the piss is this guy? So I walked over to him, and he was like, yo, you're here for League of Legends? I was like, uh, yeah. Uh, that was the worst you know, Australian accent ever, by the way. I was like, you're here for League of Legends? I, I don't know. And I was like, uh, yeah, man, how's it going? Uh, these were the, uh, this, the dude talking to me was Uber. Uh, Uber shouts from <laughs> Overwatch. He was, him and Hex, Hexagrams were doing the, uh, doing the Collegiate Overwatch shout casting. Like, immediately, I walked down the street, the dude saw me, don't know how he knew me, but he knew who I was, uh, or uh, he might not have knew who I was, but knew I was there for, uh, he might have saw me walking around, knew I was there for the event, working it, 
invited me over and he, then the, him and Hex invited me out to drinks. Like a stark contrast. Overwatch guys from the Riot guys. And they're not just collegiate Overwatch guys. They just they were just there casting collegiate. They are professional Overwatch casters. And the the mindset, the attitude, night and day. And they're actually uh, <laughs> they're actually uh, besides watching that game between Harrisburg University and Maryville University uh, in Overwatch, they they kind of made me want to start watching Overwatch because they were just genuine people. They were they were nice. They weren't elitist. They weren't douches. Like. All right, maybe I can get into Overwatch um, because you know what? If I start doing Overwatch esports stuff in the collegiate scene, at least I can see that there is uh, an all right, uh, you know, all right esh- upper echelon of humans. I can't say that with Riot, I, but after that night, I definitely could with uh, with Overwatch. Yeah, so we went over. We all three of us went over to the uh, some some bar. It was an outside bar, and. It was uh, it was a really chill time. We all talked. We all bought each other, uh, took turns buying each other a round of drinks. So we, uh, I got plastered. I'm pretty sure Uber, like the dude's like uh, pretty muscular. I'm pretty sure he can hold his liquor way more than I can. Uh, Hex is like uh, really calm and like I'm pretty sure he wasn't gonna let himself get drunk or something like that. I don't know. He's he seems like a very disciplined human. And although by the way, I don't know if Hex is ever gonna listen to this. I think I accidentally insulted him, and it wasn't even that I was drunk at the time. I was just wasn't thinking before I spoke. And we were talking about his degree, and I think I think he has a master's in writing. I think I said something really stupid about that. Like, not that I, I it wasn't like I didn't mean for it to be stupid. I think it was like something along one of those stupid lines where like uh, you can't get a job with that or something. What kind of job could you do with that or something like that? I don't know. Either way, it was uncalled for. Hex, if you're listening to this, man, I'm sorry for saying that. I totally did not mean that. I mean, I I said it without thinking. Um, because I love writing. I know what you can do with a master's uh, degree in uh, writing. And uh, yeah, dude, sorry. That was just my ass out of my, in my mouth. And uh, <laughs> is that the expression? <laughs> Either way. Uh, yeah, dude, sorry about that. Uh, didn't mean to come off his dick. And if I did, uh, yeah, my, my bad. But other than that, dude, it was great drinking with uh, Uber and Hex. Started raining outside. Oh my God, yeah, we met people there. It started raining outside. We all huddled, huddled around like there was like a canopy on the outside bar. And bless the bartenders, by the way. They did not have a canopy. So they just made drinks in the rain. Just stood out in the rain. It was uh, thankfully a brief shower, but man, I felt bad for them. My God. But yeah, the uh, there were people all around. We, we talked to various people. We didn't really move from our spot because we wanted to be under the canopy. But yeah, there's people having a good time. So... Um, this is when they ditched me and I don't blame them. (laughs) There was a bachelorette party going on and I'm married, very happily married for seven years. I've been together with my wife for like, I think, God, like 11 years now. So I don't don't really remember anymore, but (laughs) I have this habit when I get drunk and I see bachelorettes, I will buy the, um, if I have enough money, I'll buy all, buy them all drinks, uh, or at least buy the bride drink and uh, buy the bride a drink. And that's one of the few times you can buy somebody you know who's going to be married a drink because obviously they're at the bachelorette party. You know their you know their husband's not going to kick their ass. And uh, I will buy them a drink and spout on about how much I love marriage and I hope that they have a successful life and that I think they'll enjoy it. So uh, yeah, after drinking with Uber and Hex, uh, I, I I'm I went over there and I'm pretty like like I said I think they just I think they I, I'm pretty sure they said bye to me. It was kind of fuzzy because I was like pretty. <laughs> pretty into the night at that point but i do distinctly remember going over to the uh, bridesmaids and i think they all thought i was going to be a dick asshole and i i think they were pleasantly surprised when i started saying marriage is beautiful i hope your wedding is beautiful <laughs> because that's the kind of that's the kind of uh that's kind of drunk i am especially around a bachelorette party so yeah i know they're never going to listen to this but they were a lot of fun <laughs> i i hope i made an impression on them at least a positive one at that so yeah, the show uh, that was really fun. Oh, so some of the Overwatch games were held in this like IMAX theater, this or this Omni theater of some sort. Uh, it was a really breathtaking experience for a moment. If you don't get uh, you know vertigo of any sort, it uh, I I was like in the front row, so I could barely make out what was going on. But so I had to physically move my head to see various things. But if you're sitting back enough, it's actually really cool. This wasn't the main event. This was like the uh, 
uh, the finals, I should say. This was more like uh, just one of the qualifiers, maybe the quarters. And then they moved the main air, like the semis and the finals into their like theater, which has like, it's like a, like a classical theater. They have like the, uh, the seats in the middle and then they have seats on the top and on the side as well. And yeah, it was, it was a really cool little environment, cool atmosphere. Had a projector on the background with the, uh, the stage having, um, uh, you know, with the players on it, obviously, and then around on the side had the, uh, uh, all this, the, like, the people streaming it, controlling it, things like that. They also had a sound, uh, like, the sound, and like, uh, like technical booth um, in the back as well. So that was really cool. Okay, so this is another thing, too. Harrisburg University, this is going back to Riot. I'm going to kind of back step for a second. Uh, so I was doing, my, co my colleague and I were doing some work for Harrisburg University, uh, we were just trying to, you know, pitch in, do whatever we could to, you know, help out. We asked what would they need. And so we do. That's what we do at every event because we're, I don't know, we're, we're freaking humble. That's what we are. <laughs> but yeah, so we were. Um, we didn't get to go around too much. Uh, we, uh, you know, during the first day of the event. Like I said, I'm backtracking, so it's on the first day of the event again. Again, we didn't get to do too much because we were in the media room with our laptops recording games. So Harrisburg University could use them later on. And it does make me wonder if Captain Flowers was asked to do that. I doubt he was. And I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I did more work than him and still got paid less. Which that kind of, you know, that, that, that kind of pisses me off. But you know what? I'm not going to not gonna get into, like, who got paid what for what, all that BS. Because that's a never-ending thing and it's really none of my business overall. Just It is just one more thing that kind of annoys me. But, yeah, shows up for, like, five minutes does work for however long it needs to happen and uh doesn't do anything else just goes and parties kind of, kind of annoying there was an after party by the way uh, after everything was done um uh chad harrisburg they i guess rented out part of this club i think i don't know if it was rented out uh, we all got in for free so that was really nice and uh just sort of chilled the whole wub wub's not really my thing i don't really get into clubs i know that's a thing over in california I'm, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm old. I just want to, want to go have a drink. I just like watch the cooking channel at my, my hotel. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, man, I'm, I'm simple. But yeah, that's, that's Harrisburg University's, uh, first, um, esports event in kind of a nutshell. I hope they do it again this year. I, I I'm going to be honest. I don't think, especially after this, I don't think, I'm, I don't, I don't expect to be invited back. I really hope I do. I've interviewed Chad Smeltz. He was really nice. I interviewed him for, uh, CSL. And like, I feel like I have a decent rapport. I saw him at Midwest Campus Clash this past uh, uh, April. You know, I feel like we have a good rapport, but you know, like, uh, you crap talk right. You know, you kind of you kind of limit yourself, and you know, I, I really don't care to cross that bridge anymore. So I'm more than happy to burn it at this point. And uh, there's other bridges across. There's plenty of other people to meet, and riots not not the end all be all. Trust me, guys. It seems seems like they are. They want you to think they are. They're not. Uber and Hex, they showed me that uh, Overwatch, at least the staff, they're pretty freaking cool. I haven't met any of the other Overwatch people, uh, you know, besides, like, some of the players. But, um, yeah, like, 2 out of 2. It's 100% of a, you know, win rate for me as far as Overwatch professionals go. And that's way more than I got for Riot. And it's 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 dwindling every, every chance, every meeting I ever have with a Rioter. So, yeah. That's that was uh, that was that was Harrisburg. That was Hugh Fest. Really fun. Again, hope it happens again next year. That's gonna be it for now. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Hope you enjoyed my experience. I have plenty more. This is going to be gonna be, you know, gonna be. I think it was the second one I did the uh, Midwest Campus Clash last time. It's gonna be Hugh Fest. I'll do Dreamhack another time. I'll do one of the CSL finals another time. And uh, you know, I'll uh, you know, there's plenty of experiences I have to talk about. I'll do one. I'll do one about Riot. Uh, you know, casting the uh, the Chinese World Games. That sucked. But, yeah, I'm glad it was a thing that could happen that is actually erased from time and space. I'll get to that. Uh, I'll get to that complaint another time. But for now, once again, my name is Joshua Peck Quest. Thank you very much for listening. If you liked what you hear, share, like, subscribe, do whatever. But please subscribe, if anything. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you don't like. If you think I'm, be you know too unprofessional tell me i'll probably uh, i've probably heard it before but you know what i it's it's my podcast i'll do what i want and um yeah follow me on twitter twitter.com slash feques p-h-e-q-e-s 
As you can tell, I'm getting a little wound down. Uh, it's uh, 9.30, and that's pretty early for most people, but, you know, I get up at 6 a.m. to work. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end this one here, and uh, I'm going to head to my, uh, my big boy job that has nothing to do with Riot, and it feels good. I'm all right with that, and I think people should be more content with, uh, with their second dream that they have. And <laughs> accounting wasn't my second dream, but working with Riot was, or not working with Riot was my second dream. So living it, living it proud. Thank you once again. See you guys around.